been getting this interference all day on my Star Trek communicator. Someone's trying to talk to me. Let me show you. Maybe you can figure something out about it. I got this from the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas. And see, there's a warning light that's going off on it, a red blinking light. And then I, I get this interference. But uh, nobody's saying anything. Well, maybe they'll call back. But uh, anyway, welcome everybody to Toy Talk and Stuff. And today I have some interesting things to share with you. Um, where to start? Well, uh, one is when I was doing the Barbie Olympics sets, uh, one Barbie I wanted to include and forgot was uh, Michelle Kwan. So I have a 1996 Michelle Kwan ice skating uh, doll. And um, let's see if I can get this to work right. So. Um, she really does look like her, and um, she can raise her hands over her head, and she has a gold medal. Um, and it has a feature where you pull this string, ah, and she spins. Okay, it took me too long to figure that out. Uh, but there you go. So she can do her ice skating spin, so that's pretty cool. So I'll zoom in on that for you. have a handle on the back, and you can still get these, you can order them. Um, they're not, well, some are $40, some are less, um, but, whoops, all right, you pull that, see that string you pull out, and then let it go. So, Michelle Kwan is our special guest today, uh, and she gets to sit in the special guest chair, and there she goes, and does she have anything? Uh, is she, you know, happy to be here on Toy Talk? Uh, Michelle, do you have anything that, uh, you know, you'd like to express to me or anybody here about, you know, what it's like to be on Toy Talk? Okay. Our special guests seem to always be reticent to say anything, but, uh, well, it's nice to have you here. So, uh, I have an interesting array of things here. Um, one, the theme that I want to do today is uh, rubber stuff, sticky rubber stuff. I have a lot of it. This is just some. Uh, and the first ones I will share with you are uh, a couple here. I have a seal. And I've had this seal, actually it was my sister's. Uh, and I've had this, this, like, over 40 years, okay, probably more like 47 years, and I know this turtle is really old too. The turtle is hard plastic here, and then rubber there. So this fella here is pretty old as well. I can't remember, but I, I, I think both of these are over 40 years old. Um, another thing that I got when I was in uh, elementary school I would uh, not always purchase the full lunch. I would save a little bit of money, and I would go to the school store, and I would buy little things. And one of the things I thought was cool was little eraser, rubber erasers. Again, I like rubber things. So I bought a rubber uh, eraser, uh, Volkswagen Bug, and a Formula One car, and a Corvette. And I never use them for erasing um, or racing. Of course, they, they would never race anywhere because they have rubber wheels and they wouldn't go anywhere. But, uh, you know, I think if you keep them in a cool, dry place, they don't degrade, uh, at least maybe not in my lifetime. Uh, they're doing quite well. So you probably could still erase with them. And there's three guys. I have some robots, too, that were that I also got at the time, but I I um, later. Also I have, is I always had like a bag of rubber monsters or rubber critters and I used to buy them at the beach and I remember my grandfather uh, complaining that, he, you know, grandfather would give me a quarter every time I'd see him and I saved up $1.75 and I bought a bunch of rubber monsters 
and uh, he didn't understand why I would waste my money, a dollar seventy-five. I remember him being very upset about that on Rubber Monsters. Uh, but I have them. I still have a few left. I have my favorite ones, which is great. And uh, these two are among my favorites, and they're kind of like, I don't know, like mosquito-looking things. I don't know why. I, I got bit by mosquitoes like crazy uh, growing up, and even now I'm one of those people, and I don't know, I like mosquito-looking things. or you know. So it's the same thing with that dinosaur toy, that not real dinosaur, also kind of like a mosquito. You can see a similarity. I also like, these two were my favorite, well this was, I think this was one of my, like my second favorite design, was this fella here, and, whoop, and you can see that, and he has like the tongue that's sticking out, and he's a finger puppet, so you could put him on your finger, and, and then he would like sting the other creatures, and you know, that's what he would do, and then there's another one that was kind of his compatriot. Um, here, which also, he, this one is uh, a finger puppet, also, but he's got four little legs and uh, a little snorkel kind of mouth, and um, I didn't, um, I didn't, I, he didn't stay, I know that, he was, he was kind of a, the nice guy, um, and then I had centipedes, and uh, you know, who doesn't have centipedes, right, I had different centipedes, Really, the thing about these is, is that I've had these all these years. Like, I had this spider when I was, like, all of these things I had when I was, like, 10 or less. And I, this, here's a little guy. I, I always liked him, even though he's crooked. Um, I thought he was cute. And he, he would, like, kind of hop around on his four little legs. Um, that was sort of his, his thing that he would do. Um, and I would take a bag of these creatures, and I would have my grandmother sit in the chair and close her eyes and then I would pour the bag over her head and she would act like she was afraid. And, and I, I always suspected that the first time that she really was afraid, and maybe the second, but I would do it a third time and I always felt like she knew it was coming, but she still hung in there. She, didn't, she wasn't as enthusiastic the third time, so I began to think she really wasn't afraid. Um, but that was, that was a kind of fun to, you know, I like to have as a boy. Um, I've got a cricket, and um, and then this uh, kind of cricket here. And um, I have seen these in real life. The name escapes me right now. Uh, cave cricket. And I was painting a house outside, and this person had like kind of garage that had hundreds if not thousands of these things and they're big this is like only half or a third of the size and they would plop down on the ground and you'd hear them thunk 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 and i was just so horrified to think that one of them would land on me because they had these long legs and you know just you know oogie um so those that's what's left of my little rubber monster collection uh but i do have a lot of other rubber things i have like a big bag of, of more modern or newer rubber, rubber things. Um, but another thing that I wanted to share is maybe uh, you out there might remember like tacky wall crawlers. They, they would look like um, the octopi or spiders and you would throw them at glass or throw them at a wall and they would stick, they'd kind of squish and they would stick and they would roll down. Of course the problem is that if you threw them at contractor grade paint, which is like the cheapest paint you can get on a wall, they wouldn't really roll down, they would stay. And I learned the hard way. Um, I had a house with a very tall cathedral ceiling and no ladder tall enough to go get it, uh, and threw one up like 20 feet up in the air onto it, and it smacked into that paint, and it never came down after years. And eventually, uh, had to get a, somebody, like, actually, I think the fire people came in when they were checking something, and they, you know, we asked them if they could get it off the wall, and it left a stain, so that was also a disappointing thing, but tacky wall crawlers, so you throw them at the wall, and most of the time, they would walk down, or certainly down glass, right, and um, they were really neat. The guy that invented them, I've taken some notes here, and, and 
here I go with my double glasses, as I told you. All right, so they were called wacky wall callers, uh, crawlers, and they were invented by a guy named Ken Hakuda. So if I remember correctly, my wife remembers reading about it, the same story, that um, there was someone in a lab and accidentally made this material and just thought it was great. It might have been him. It didn't say that in Wikipedia, but I, it might have been, because I knew it was a Japanese person that had accidentally invented this and thought it was great, and he even modeled one of the toys, wacky, wall crawling type of toys after his son. Um, and it was called Miracle X10 Material, is what he called it. And um, that was in the 80s, and he bought the rights uh, to manufacture it for $5,000, and he sold, uh, I think that's uh, 240, 240 million wacky wall crawlers. Uh, he brought it to the Washington area specifically and marketed it and sold it out from there, and it just went crazy. And I remember in the 80s that they were around. And then around 1990, um, I remember um, that I saw on this Toys R Us, it was, it was a dark Toys R Us, and it was kind of an obscure, out of the way one. Um, and I saw on the back of a end cap, just a little display with these guys here. And these are Stretchoid Warriors. And I bought two of them at that time. And I thought they were so cool that I was like, I'm going to go get the others. I'm going to go get all of them. So I have the full collection. So what the Stretchoid Warriors, I'm going to zoom in here on them. Uh, let's see if you can, you can see them here. All right. So now I'm going to hold them up for you. All right. So here's one. All right. And this is the knight. And it, they came in pieces. You had to put them together. It came with a sword and you had to wrap a uh, sticker around it to make it like a chrome sword, and they had this body, like this shell of plastic that would snap on them and give them some form, like they they had uh, snap-on uh, gauntlets on their hands. He has a, uh, a bolt, uh, like a crossbow on his hand, and they have, uh, he has a helmet, uh, you know, okay, and they have a hard plastic head, and they, the hands would have like a, a tight plastic clamp. So you would wrap it around their hand and that would snap. And the same thing with their bodies, it would snap in there and the legs and, and then he could grab things because the clamp would, would clamp around something and hold the sword. Um, they, all, they had stickers that you had to put on. The stickers didn't stay on very well, but you know, you can use shoe glue to hold stickers on. So if you have a toy or anything, that has a sticker that's not working real well, you can kind of smear some shoe glue on it and, and then push the sticker back down and it will never come back off. Um, so what's neat about the Stretchwood Warriors, they were made out of Miracle X-10 material, okay? And they would come with a stand because they can't stand on their own, all right? And so they would have this jiggly legs and they would actually have like a little, you can actually hook their leg, there's a little pink, a push-in tab on the back so they could stay in intact with the leg intact um, and and then you know it would like act like a hinge but you could unhook it and then you could stretch the leg because it's made out of the X10 material you could take their whole body off now their head would always be a hard piece of plastic and then you could throw it at a wall and it would crawl down the wall and they're they're you know they have the stretchy they have the stretchy arms see and and even the head would stretch so you could it had a, the neck so you could stretch it now when I was looking these up online actually for years I couldn't even find any information on it online I guess no one had put anything out and now you can um, tacky stretchoid warriors uh, and some of them like some people are trying to sell one for two hundred dollars actually this one um, this guy here someone was trying to sell it for two hundred dollars this is actually my least favorite, um, but you know, for two hundred dollars, I don't have any problem. You know, <laughs> maybe. Um, although it's nice to have an intact collection. Um, so they were two dollars when I got them. I remember them being like a dollar ninety-nine. 
So you can put him in a stand because he won't stand by himself, and then they'll stand up. All right. And so this guy, uh, like my least favorite, you know, he he has a lot of, of his stretchiness exposed, and uh, he has a big, uh, big, broad sword kind of blade. Um, and I think what I didn't like about him is he has that hockey mask look, and I didn't like uh, what is it, Michael Myers. But he also looks like in this the Road Warrior movie, the second Mad Max movie, that the bad guy there. So that probably you know, didn't probably endear him to me as well. Um, and and then I have these other two. I'm waiting to tell you my favorite one. So um, and then you know so this one's a ninja, okay. And uh, and then you have this uh, kind of I don't know some kind of space warrior because um, it looks like he has some kind of like space weapon over here, and he has a ninja sword as well. Um, and they have a lot of accessories. They're, they're pretty detailed. Like he has like a, a, a boot knife that you can take out and then it slides in. Um, you know, and then he has a samurai sword that, that comes out. It's actually got a sheet that you had to, you had to squeeze the two halves of the sheet together and then put a sticker around it to hold it uh, together. That's how the, all the sheets went together on these guys. So it's pretty cool. Um, my favorite, now, is Spike. His name is Spike. And I did remember that. Now, I have the names for them, but I'm not sure. I think they, they said what I was reading is this one is Arnie. Uh, but then I saw the name Ernie, and I'm wondering if somebody wrote it wrong. So it's either Arnie or Ernie, or there also is an Arnie and an Ernie. Um, and then there's Thunderbolt um, and Fringe. Um, I don't know who they are, but I do know that this is Spike. So this one is Spike. This is my favorite. Um, I just thought he was the coolest looking one. You know, he's, of course, the head, and he's got, he's got uh, both, he's got uh, knives, throwing knives in both ankles that you can pull that out, and, and there he's got like a little, a little knife that you can throw. Um, but the coolest thing about this, and I remember just like so excited uh, I think I, my, my wife got me uh, a couple of them, and I think she's the one that started me being interested in them, but then I found that Toys R Us and I, I found some more of them. Um, and I remember being all excited, telling her, uh, oh my gosh, it has a real recurved bow. So you actually had to bend the bow back like a real bow, okay? The plastic went one direction, and then it had a little hook, and you would hook on, it came with string, and you would hook it on, and you would actually uh, wire the plastic backwards to pull so it would actually have more resistance. And the arrows would actually notch in the rope, or in this case, string, and then you could shoot it. And before the show started, I actually tested that, and I shot one, and it, it went pretty far. Um, so, uh, and then it will shoot uh, ping, and it will shoot quite a ways away. Um, so I don't want to lose, I, have not, I haven't lost any of the pieces to these uh, in 30 years. So, what, 32 years now? So, pretty good. Uh, I don't want to lose any, any more, you know, any more of anything. I hate losing anything, and I haven't lost any pieces to these. Um, so another thing that's similar to that stretchoid material, not quite, I guess somebody said, hey, try not to make it that tacky again. Uh, but these, uh, like, I don't know, rubber things that you stick inside a slingshot, and then they hook on, and this won't stick to your wall. But you can get this, like, for 5 or $10 at Walmart, and then it, it just throws it forward, and then that sticks and, and flops, and that came with a few of those. Um, let's see again if we can get anybody over here on the communicator. Try to tune that in here. Now I'm, I'm, I'm getting nothing. Well, that's all right. Um, and, and you know, something, something changed here. Something very dramatic. Um, I don't know if you all have noticed, but, um, Terminator, Arnold Terminator over there. 
Um, it looks like he 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 uh, changed his clothes or something. Something's not quite the same. Um, I, I, I'm seeing a lot more silver on him. Um, are, are you all right? I'll be back. Well, he's still saying I'll be back. All right. Um, well, you're you're here. Um, I guess it looks like you went somewhere, and now you're back. And 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 now that you're back, you, you look quite different. Um, did did anything happen that we should know about? Anything? You know? Were you okay? Did you have you been eating? You know? Have you? It, because it, maybe you're not eating well, and and you, you just look like you've lost a lot of weight. Um, I mean, look, I, I can see your hydraulics, um, and, and in fact, uh, everybody here can also see your hydraulics in your elbow. Um, you can see that actually it has real working hydraulics in the front and back on that. and. Um, and then you have a little bit of the hydraulics on the inner thigh that pull the thigh, and then um, don't really have hydraulics that move in the back, but you know you can you can actually see on the figure that you know that they were mechanically thinking that he should have that, which he should. And then he has like a hydraulic calf here. Every we're, we're seeing everything on you, Arnold. You you know Arnold Terminator. You see in your neck you have like some hydraulics to support your neck, and and well your your mouth moves all right the mouth moves a bit and got some trapezius muscles and and uh ah. all right well instead of i'll be back at least you're making a different sound you know um i think you need to eat i think that after the show that should be your priority um uh, i know that your your little laser gun here makes noise too when it has batteries in it but um there's no batteries in it now and that's okay don't need to hear everything that you do all the time. All right, uh, but please take care of yourself and, and eat a little bit more. Uh, right, Yoda? Yes, this is Jedi strength. Draw from the Force. He's not a Jedi, but if he doesn't eat, he won't have any strength, right? So uh, you're right about that. And you know, uh, we also should take a look at what Bigfoot made, right? A little bit more in depth. Bigfoot made this out of a block of wood, a piece of yarn, a wire, and and I gotta say, I, these wheels look nothing like the wheels that I left out for him, but somehow he was able to mold it into this, and this is quite exceptional. And the fact that he even copied this 1968 um, pull-along Snoopy toy is, is just really astounding. I mean, the paint and everything, the, the ears that move, um, I know this can be um, ordered for about 12 bucks, $13, uh, you can still find them. You'd think that for being over 50 years old, it'd be worth a lot of money, but I guess they made a whole bunch, and it's just not worth that much. Uh, but uh, Bigfoot managed to make his own, um, and I, I think that's quite something. You know, we're going to go back out into the bush, uh, and we're going to see uh, what else Bigfoot's capable of making. I, I think he's capable of doing a lot more, so we will be taking a look at that. Um, what do you think about that, Galactus? I serve you. Uh, we all serve each other. I think that's, you know, a nice sentiment that we should have. We're all here for each other, and and I'm here to entertain you, and, and we're here to learn also about Bigfoot. Right, uh, Metroplex? Metroplex is having one of his moments where all, all he's doing is transformer noises. Yeah, and in fact, I think Metroplex might need to recharge his batteries. Um, well, before we go, um, this is Optimus Prime. Megatron must be stopped. Megatron, of course, must be stopped. All we need is a little energy. Well, we do have Energon. In fact, you were able to use your Energon to transform from robot form into truck form. So remember I had told you last time that this one has three wheels in the back, um, and I think it makes a really nice looking truck. And this sword that uh, I had in his hand does not go to this Optimus. It goes to a uh, kind of a fancy Japanese 
Optimus Prime that's a triple changer uh, that changes from, let's see, uh, train and uh, an Optimus and I think a spaceship. So, uh, and it speaks Japanese. It only speaks Japanese. Um, so I will have Optimus use some of that Energon to change into the other form of Optimus Prime that, uh, that I'm just mentioning and uh, for the next show. So uh, I hope that you all enjoyed everything that we went through here. Ah, before I forget, because I, I, I hate when I forget things. When I was doing the dinosaur show and I was showing you how the Allosaurus was very upright, uh, and I, then I brought out the Jurassic Park ones, if you, you know, you'll note that dinosaurs, uh, theropods, okay, two-legged carnivorous dinosaurs now walk with their bodies lengthwise. They balance, they, they're on their two legs, and then they have their head going in one direction and their tail going in another, and they bounce, and then uh, bounce, and then they can run, and that gives them a much more uh, usable gait. They really don't drag their tail behind them, you know, and, and that was something different. And when we study dinosaurs further, we'll be able to see that uh, more directly. So I'll be bringing that up uh, again. Well, once again, thank you. This is GL1. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, I will be seeing you soon, maybe out in the bush. <laughs>